Are you considering HubSpot Sales Pro, but you're not quite sure what's inside? Well, let's take a look in this demo. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. HubSpot Sales Professional is the third level of option from HubSpot Sales Products, and it's a little bit pricier than the starter or the free, but it has so much to offer. So in this demo, I'm going to walk you through the features of that platform, how that's gonna benefit your sales team, and then if there's any questions that we don't go deep enough in, you can drop those in the comments below. Make sure and hit subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Let's go ahead and take a look. So when you log into your HubSpot portal, if you actually have the professional, you're going to see this menu here at the top. And really what this menu is going to contain is all of the different HubSpot opportunities that you might have. And if you don't have access to them, you're going to actually see those with a little bit of a, and maybe a checkbox or a lock or a star so you can't get access to those. But real quick to walk you through this, just like any typical CRM, you're going to see the contacts here on the contact screen. So a CRM is going to be that contact relationship or customer relationship management tool that keeps all of those individual contacts in one place with the information that allows you to track those relationships, turn those into sales or opportunities, and then ultimately use those to manage that customer journey and that lifetime. So we're going to look here at this contacts tab and we've got contacts, companies, in the HubSpot sales CRM, sales pro or sales enterprise or starter, any of the levels, HubSpot is a contact oriented CRM. So it does have the individual contact record and then that contact record can be associated to companies, to deals, and then those objects can also be related to one another. We'll get to that in just a second. So we've got contacts, companies, calls are going to be the ability for you to call through HubSpot and the ability for you to actually log that within the system. So that's gonna be a pretty powerful tool on the Sales Pro. You get thousands of minutes the limits are sometimes um, changing based on what time you're watching this video, it's 2022, but you do get lots of minutes, thousands, uh, again, at this recording, I think it's 3000 minutes uh, that you get in the Sales Pro, and then that can be tracked right here in HubSpot. We'll get to that in a second. Target accounts is going to be a feature that allows you to do um, account-based marketing, and that's more going to be on the, on the marketing side, so we won't cover that here. Custom objects are not available in the Sales Pro, so we'll, we'll buzz by that. Activity feed is going to be a place where you can see all of the activity that is happening with the contacts inside of your portal. So right now we don't have any activity because this is a test portal, but if we did, we would actually be able to see that such and such person opened email XYZ, so and so booked a uh, meeting using XYZ meeting link, um, perhaps someone had viewed a document, all of that's gonna be here in a feed for the whole organization or you can view just your activity. And then the last piece is going to be the list. So these are going to be the ways for you to put people into static lists. So it might be, you know, let's say that my sales team went to a trade show. I come back with a list from that trade show and I'd like to put it here in the CRM and I can then load that list, label that as trade show list XYZ. And then I've got it here in HubSpot and then also the individual contacts are in HubSpot as well. So lists are both static or active and active means that let's say I upload everyone from a trade show and dynamically, I have their property field marked as trade show, as the source, and then I can simply create a list that says anybody that has this contact field is labeled as a, or is put into this list as trade show, active, that's how an active list would work. So really from the contacts tab standpoint, the sales pro is going to make it possible for you to really have a good perspective and good view of all of the contacts in your system and how each one of those is going to be oriented in their journey. So to go into the individual contact record, just to see what that looks like, we'll take a look at this sample one here and we'll go to Michael Scott. He's my favorite one to use. So inside of the Sales Pro environment, we've got all of these records here on the left-hand side. We can toggle this on, toggle this off so you can see more or collapse it if you need to. And then all of this information here on the left can be customized in terms of what you want to see, what you don't want to see. At the Sales Pro level, we actually have teams. So you can have people have access to certain pieces of information and not to other pieces of information. On the right hand side, you can see that we have the information that's specific to deals. So at this point, Michael Scott is linked to three deals we have in, in progress. We've also got tickets, which would be on the, the service side if you happen to be using that. And then right now, we don't have Michael Scott associated to any companies because we actually have this as a demonstrative thing. So if I said, oh, you know what? HubSpot typically associates contacts 
with companies automatically based on their domain. But in this case, it somehow was disassociated either by hand, or in this case, again, this is our test portal. So if I were going to look for a company to add, perhaps I just need to go back in, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and sync him to SimpleStrat, and we're going to save that. So we've got the ability to, again, go ahead and sync him to the company or the company to the contact. We can also say, let's, let's say that we're going to track um, maybe multiple sales reps to a company, but they're also representing another company. So maybe like a distribution type of scenario. I could have Michael Scott linked to two companies and I can label it his first one here. It looks like it's primary. The second one, we can choose an associated label. So if I add another one, let's just put an A in here. We're gonna look for this one. If I say yes, and then I can add an association label here and we can choose what those labels are. Again, this is gonna be in that pro level. Super handy if you have that kind of multiple association thing going on in your company. Now we also see that we're gonna keep attachments in the, um, in the contact record, any list memberships, I just talked about lists. Playbooks are going to be a feature inside of Sales Pro that allow us to see the opportunity to use a set script or steps that you might have when you're going through a sales conversation. In this case, if I wanted to use the discovery playbook, I might call Michael Scott and then actually use this playbook on the call with him to track how, what he's saying and record that all in a way that allows the call to flow. And then that information is saved as a note inside of his record. So again, this really, like I like this a lot because it simplifies what do I say, how do I say it, when do I say it? and ensures that consistency with your sales team. If you do go up to the enterprise level, you can have individual fields then logged against the playbook. But for now, if you need more information on playbooks, we have a video about that. I'd encourage you to check that out. Super powerful feature here in Sales Pro. Now workflows are going to be one of those things that people love about Sales Pro as well. And these workflows allow us to do certain things, if this, then that, based on information inside of the contact record or properties that are filled out for that individual contact or deals. We also have a couple of other things. There's a couple plugins here that we have in this portal. Um, one of the things in Sales Pro to keep in mind is HubSpot is a very fast growing integration marketplace. So that means you have access to a lot of third party tools that are built on the HubSpot platform or the API that makes it possible for you to have information inside a HubSpot that's not just specific to uh, the HubSpot native platform. So here we've got a sales navigator integration that we've chosen to display in this test portal. Now we've got HubSpot payments is also going to be one of those features. I'll talk about that here in a second when we talk about quotes. But again, all these things on the right hand side, we're soon going to be able to customize those also. That's coming out soon. Not sure when you watch this video, but that's, that's coming as well. Now here in the middle of the feed for this individual contact record, we've got the activity that has happened we can look at all of these different things that, that have happened. We can also then look at any notes that have been recorded and taken and saved in their record. Again, these might be sales notes. These might be customer service notes. If you're using this in addition to the other HubSpot hubs, um, any emails that have been sent emails would be um, one to one emails, or in this case, I believe this would be, yes, they're logged from your email clients and then calls. Like I mentioned before, we can either log a call. And so this particular scenario here means, if a sales rep, I called out and I used a line that wasn't connected to HubSpot and I could actually then record it here. Or you could make a phone call and actually set up your phone number and calling through HubSpot. And then literally as you call, dials through the system and you get a chance to have that conversation and then log it immediately inside of HubSpot. Super slick. Again, something that you want to check out and get it set up if that's uh, in your, that's in your list of criteria. For tasks, this is a pretty powerful piece of most modern CRMs, but what I love about Sales Pro is that tasks are something that not only can I assign to myself, I can assign to my teammates, and HubSpot has a task queue that allows you to do so much of the, I'll call it like flow state. So if you're in a flow state, I'm just, I'm doing task after task after task, and I can make it easy for me to stay on that kind of flow state and work through the follow-ups that I need to in order to get my sales um, contacts made. And then meetings, we'll look at this in a second, but meetings are going to be either you can log one here, or if you use the meetings links through HubSpot, I can use them to book, have people outside of the organization book meeting times, 
book them with my team, round robin, you name it, we'll look at that here in a second. So all of this here is in the hub, in the contact record. The biggest piece that you get as a sales pro user is the opportunity to have lots and lots of different custom fields. So you have up to a thousand custom fields here on the left-hand side. Let's say you wanna track hobbies, you wanna track what software they use, you wanna track, again, it's unlimited. Be careful with what you want to track because at some point, data is only helpful if you actually have information in that field. But in the in the same respect, you can have a, there's a lot of flexibility here for what you can do. If you're if you want to learn about how to customize those properties, we've got some videos about that as well. But again, we're just doing a demo here. Now, inside of Sales Pro, we also have a couple of things here that you want to take a look at. One's going to be the inbox where you can have conversations that come into your company. So let's say um, sales at xyzcompany.com and that just happens to be a catch-all. Let's say it's on your sales collateral. We can actually funnel that into HubSpot and then it, those conversations can be assigned and the notifications get out to the reps that way. Um, snippets and templates are going to be two of the sales team's best friends. And the, the bonus with Sales Pro is just the, the sheer amount of templates and snippets that you get. So if you happen to be on free, you only get five templates and you can't choose which templates you share. If you're on Sales Pro, you get up to a thousand templates. So templates would be things like consistent uh, cold emails that you might use with contacts that you are reaching out to for the first time. Uh, templates might also be something like when you're sending out a proposal. We use that a lot when we're sending out HubSpot quotes. And if someone's got to the point where they're ready to work with us from a consulting perspective, we send out a email that has a link to their quote. And actually that entire email is always just loaded from a template, makes it easy. I customize the first sentence and we're off on our way. So I'll dig into that real quick here. Templates you can have just for yourself. You can share them across your team. And then ultimately, as again, as you can see here, we've got 5,000 opportunity uh, to create templates and only 11 in our test portal but we can use personalization tokens. We can use anything that's in a contact or company record from a property perspective can be in here as a custom personalization token. We can also do you know, text styling. We can also add any sort of uh, bullet points. And then there is the opportunity to insert your meeting links, a video if you happen to have a video that you've shot that you wanna pull from the library, documents, which I'll we'll cover here in a second. And then a snippet is like a short um, short code to expand additional text for the way we use snippets. One of the use cases is when we do create our quotes, we have a pound terms and pound terms simply expands to list all of the purchase terms in a quote. So again, one small snippet, I'll show you that here in a second. And then this gets sent out. So lead conversion from email um, 01, the owner here as well. And again, it looks like it's shared with everybody. If I wanted to organize my templates by folder, I can do that here as well. So that is templates. Now we'll X out of that. And then our snippets, like I just mentioned, are going to be these small things that we would just say, okay, here's my sales note snippets. Let's say that I wasn't using playbooks and I wanted to load a note every time a sales conversation was happening, but I wanted to make sure that I covered budget, needs, decision maker, and timeline. If I forget that, I might miss the opportunity to get the information I need to move forward. So I would just then say pound sales notes. So I'm gonna go back to Michael Scott and just show that here real quick. What that looks like is going to Michael Scott. I'm gonna start a note and I'm going to hit pound um, sales note snippet and that pops up just like that. So that's how snippets work. Again, we have another video about that if you wanna check that out. Uh, moving on to the next piece, this is gonna be the marketing tab. And when you're in Sales Pro, we're not gonna cover too much here because we're not going to be using a whole lot in the marketing tab. Marketing Pro is super powerful, but really that's for the marketing team. And if you have an SLA or a service level agreement between your two organizations or two levels of the organization, this is gonna be where all this data and how you organize it is gonna to come to head. But we're gonna skip this for now because most of this is gonna be a sales function or a marketing function. Now, the sales tab, this is where the rest of the information and the rest of the really good stuff for you is going to live. So sales are going to have the opportunity for you to bring those contacts into deals. So deals is what people think of as opportunities or pipeline. That's really what we're looking at when we look at deals. In Sales Pro, you have the chance to look at it both in a table like this or in a Kaban style. And these individual stages are actually customizable and you can put individual percentages and likelihood to close on those stages. 
Now in Sales Pro, you have the chance to have up to 15 different pipelines. So let's say you have a pipeline for a certain service line. We do that in organization. We have two different pipelines that roll up into one master sales pipeline, but we might have different stages in those pipelines. So it helps actually customize it for the reps when you're wanting to have more specific um, pieces to walk through as you look to close or qualify that, that opportunity toward the end. Now, if I actually am in Kanban style, I can easily just drag and drop these back and forth. And then I can choose what information I want to actually have appear on the cards. I can have a different um, opportunity to sort. So I can sort here by people. I can sort by create date. I can also sort by the last activity, the close date. And then actually I have all of the filters over on the right hand side that allow me to filter even further. So because there's so much power, I usually encourage people to think about what would be the things you want to see. And then if you need to take a, a look further in additional demos, you would actually say, hey, I would love to see our deals by X. Is that possible? I'm gonna say 99% of the time it is possible. And then again, just like contacts, we can have custom fields. So I'm gonna open just this particular deal and you can see it looks very similar to the contact record because we have about the deal on the left-hand side and we can toggle that just like we did in the contact record. We've got this activity field or feed, again, looks very similar. And the right-hand side, again, looks very similar. We're, we're talking to Bruce Springsteen for this particular one, but we've got different um, stages here and then I can easily change those inside of the deal or again, I can go back to my deal view and I can easily drag and drop those back and forth. Now, just to give you a quick view of what that looks like on the backside, just so you know um, how we can manage these. Um, we've got our setup here on the deals. And then if we actually wanted to look at our pipelines, this is where I was talking about, we can do these um, different percentages here. And then we can also automate, which is the beauty of sales pro. So this is where the power comes in. We can create a workflow that if something happens, so let's say for example, if a deal is overdue by the close date by a day, or let's say a week, the manager of that particular deal of the rep gets a notification and then the current rep also gets a notification and it gets flagged, something of that nature. So again, just because you can do these things doesn't mean you do all the things, but think about the activity that you wish you could have automated and then make a list of those things and bring that as criteria when you're looking at selecting sales pro as your opportunity. Again, we do this for a lot of, a lot of different clients, helping them set up their um, different pipelines. And then we've got um, the ability for the, those pipelines to roll up and then actually report on those differently. Back to the deals, one more quick thing. At the bottom of that deal, you'll see that at the bottom, we've got all of these different totals and those totals are gonna summarize all of the dollar values in that particular stage of the pipeline. And then the way forecasting is going to work is forecasting, which you can do in sales pro forecasting will allow you then to take a percentage of that particular deal stage. So let's say I've got 10% chance of this first appointment scheduled closing. The forecast is going to say 10% of this field on the left is going to be my predicted revenue because it's taking that into a mathematical perspective. So if you want some more information about forecasting, let us know, we can do a specific look at that for you. Now, the next thing inside of sales, oh, actually, well, let's look at this real quick while we have here. So we're gonna dismiss this for a second. So we've got the ability for us to set up goals and then actually each rep can have a goal and that's going to be then weighted against the types of deals and the amount that they have in their um, sales pipeline. So that's a quick look at deals or forecasts. And then the tasks, like I mentioned before, these tasks are going to be all the tasks that are assigned to contacts, companies, or deals. You can assign a task and have it have multiple associations, but still just have one task. And we've got different categories of sorting here at the top. So you'll see this across all of the sales hub um, products or sales hub features, but you can, there's a lot of filtering and filtering and sorting and views. So you can customize what you wanna want, what you wanna see, when you wanna see it, how you wanna see it, which I think to me, that's one of the biggest benefits of this. The UI UX is pretty intuitive. So if I say I'm gonna follow up with Leslie, I can actually then pull this up. So here in this task, you'll see that we've actually got um, this bar here at the top. And this is what I mean when I mean the task queue. And so we can actually run through all the tasks that we have at once 
in this view and you don't have to click back and forth to the different um, contacts, different screens, you can actually get in that flow state and, and achieve different tasks. So I'm just gonna create a couple more tasks just so we can see what that looks like real quick and uh, demonstrate that for you. So let's, we're gonna go back to Michael Scott and we're gonna make him a task real quick and we'll see what this looks like. So to make a task, we're just going to create one here and we're going to say follow up with Michael and it's going to be in three days. We'll actually just set it today and I'm gonna click create, perfect. All right, so if I go back to my tasks, now we've got two tasks here and if I um, go ahead and add them to my queue, I can do that. Or if I just click start two tasks, you'll see up at the top that I've actually got two tasks in progress. So I'm gonna do this with Leslie and I'm gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna skip Leslie's task today because I don't have the information I need or I could reschedule the task because let's just say I'm supposed to get back in touch about the proposal. I already did, haven't heard anything. I'm just gonna reschedule this to go forward in three days and we're good. Now I'm gonna go next and it automatically pulls up Michael's record. I'm not clicking back and forth. This might be one of my favorite features in Sales Pro, but your sales team I think is going to love this. So we can actually reschedule this one as well. We're gonna click save and then we're actually done. We're gonna go back to tasks. So tasks, super powerful here in Sales Pro. Now a couple other features in the Sales Pro are going to be the documents. Documents are gonna be a, a opportunity for you to upload something that allows you to have visibility on the interaction or tracking of that information. So one of the things that we don't have as much anymore because of Google and Apple privacy tracking on the email opens is we still are not able to really see if someone has some of those, those um, interactivity signals with our content. So when you send out a document, you can choose from this library here or we can actually have this sync to our inbox. So I'm going to jump over to my, um, so I'm gonna jump over to my Google inbox and show you what this looks like. When you use Sales Pro and you're syncing the HubSpot environment to your Outlook or Google inbox, you actually have the opportunity to use the CRM together in your inbox without bouncing back and forth and actually get the documents that I just showed you right here in your email. So if you were actually loading documents, for example, we loaded this one couple in here, or if you look in an inbox, I've also got templates here in the middle. So all of those features you have as sales features in HubSpot also show up in your inbox here. So imagine if I was going to send something to um, a contact and I pull this up and I say, you know what, I wanna actually send the document I'm going to use the template, um, let's see here, HubSpot, follow up and proposal email, here we go. And I'm going to say, so this is just an example, an example. let's say that I'm gonna introduce um, view our collateral piece here. And I can say, I'm going to introduce a document and we're gonna introduce that here. And actually, I want this to say that, so I'm gonna hover over this, change just to say this. And there we go. Now I've actually got document tracking on a piece that I'm gonna send through email that's actually in HubSpot. So if I go back to HubSpot, these documents are going to be, again, the visibility for you and your sales team to see who interacts with different case studies, for example, eBooks. Again, these are, these are going to be documents. Now, if I wanna look at that document, I can preview it like this. When people open it, it's going to look like this. It's gonna add open a window. You can add your logo. So this is customized. And then they can actually download it right here. And then to send a track link, we would actually go back to the summary and I can create a link that goes just to one person. If I do that here inside of my Google inbox, it's tracked automatically. So that's documents. Uh, meetings are going to be one of those super powerful tools that I'm actually going to show you here. You can schedule meetings by syncing your Outlook or Google with your calendar. And what that ends up looking like is here's four meetings that I have in my meeting links, but in Pro, it gives you the chance to have multiple meeting links. And then also I can set up a meeting link with both myself and a coworker or a round robin type of scheduling. So if I say, yes, I wanna create a new meeting link or a scheduling page, these are the examples that I get. So I can do just for me, I can do it as a group, or I can do it as a round robin, and that's all gonna be here in Sales Pro. The other thing I can do, if you look at how this is set up, I can also set my availability. I can say I can use contact tokens based on what they tell me in the, in the booking forms. And then I can also use Zoom integration so every time someone uses the same Zoom meeting room, saves so much time for me to not have to set that and figure out what room we're going to be using. And then there's rescheduling and cancel opportunities for your recipient, just like 
things like Calendly or Chili Pepper uh, might be using. If you wanted to use meeting type, we can then report on meeting types and then actually put that into a dashboard. If you're using these for, let's say, demo types or initial calls, all of this can then be automatically recorded uh, from a reporting standpoint. So let's go back to this one here and we've got payments. Payments are a fairly new feature in HubSpot Sales Pro and it means that you can actually then create payment links for someone to then transact their sales with you. If you work with us, you'll see that we use payment links when someone transacts their HubSpot uh, quote. If they've approved their quote, we then send them a payment link and they pay directly. So HubSpot then allows you, there are some, some stipulations and just like any payment processor, there's some fees, but this is um, now available here in Sales Pro. There are playbooks we just talked about, um, but I'll give you a quick look here. Again, we've got playbooks that allow us to track the information we want um, and the information that we want someone to follow in those sales meetings. And quotes, again, I say I think I'm saying this about all the tools, but quotes are also one of my favorite tools because I'm no longer having to write something over here, upload it, send it for a signature, get it back, save it in the CRM. It's all here in the environment and in Sales Pro, you get a product library in addition to just having quotes. So if you have a sales starter, you might get quotes, but the product library is what I love because you actually get a chance to pull that information in when you're uh, devising that quote. So in this case, you'll see that if we're creating a quote, it's gonna walk through the opportunity to say, what deal do you want this to? So if I have a deal, it's going to show the deal and the quote that's alive for it. So I'm gonna create one here. I go to next. I can actually standardize and create different templates and manage those here in HubSpot. So there's definitely flexibility here. I can name it something different. I've got an expiration up to 90 days or custom if I want to. And then comments to buyers and purchase terms. So again, what I was talking about with those snippets, if you have different terms for different types of quotes, you could use snippets to then just easily populate this area. So if I do this and I name it next, I wanna have both of the people that are inv in, uh, involved on my side, so both this person and then us. And if I look at the um, product library, this would be, here we have a lawnmower, but we're gonna be able to load information from the product library and that's where this comes in here. Or you could create a custom line item at this time. So we're gonna install a lawnmower here because this is our example. And then I could actually have a space for a written signature, an e-signature, we use that quite a bit and then if we want, you can require signatures from them or them and us or both. And then you can choose to check out or not check out. And then once you've done that, um, you actually wanna say, we're gonna have two counter signatures. We're gonna click next. And we're actually gonna publish this quote. Now that the quote is live, we actually can then send the quote link right here. So if I copy this and I send it, then they'll actually view the quote. I can see that they viewed the quote and we're well on our way. So again, love, love, love that feature from HubSpot Sales Pro. Now, I think that took us through our dropdown. Uh, the other piece here is going to be the automations and sequences and workflows. So if you're not sure what the difference between sequences and workflows is, really it comes down to function. Sequences are going to be the sequence of outgoing information or tasks or activities that need to happen to a contact. And workflows is going to be trying to automate activities between objects inside of HubSpot. So with HubSpot Sales Pro, sequences allow you to create these ongoing, again, activity flows to get activity from a contact, essentially. So if I look at creating a sequence, they do come preloaded, so you can have some here, like let's say I did go to that trade show and I want my team to just use the event follow-up. Here is what's recommended. An automated email, a task to connect on LinkedIn, an automated email call. I will say that these are very basic. Some of the best sequence builders out there are gonna recommend up to 27 different types of actions. If that happens, I'm just gonna say, you probably wanna spend some time testing your sequences before you get too crazy, because again, just because you can, doesn't mean that you should, but it shouldn't just be automated emails. There should be a lot more going on in your sequences, and you can then build, so I'm gonna use this as an example. You can build anything you want in here because you actually have the chance to just say to do. So to do might be text the client. The to do might be send a handwritten letter. You can make up your own to do's. The automated emails are the ones where it pulls your template from the templates area and puts it into a sequence and then uses those tokens there. And then an email is one if let's say 
I was gonna send a private email myself, I would do that this way as well. And then if you wanted to send um, an in-mail, again, these two are possible here with the LinkedIn sales integrate or navigator integration, but you might not see this in your environment if you happen to be demoing this as well. Now, there's gonna be settings here where we can say only execute on business days, follow up as threads. I can automate specifically, let's say that they need to be unenrolled because of X, or they're typically only unenrolled by default if they um, if they reply or if the meeting gets booked through a scheduling link. You can use a workflow to also then have other criteria. So we've done this where let's say that someone has indicated that they are interested in a demo, but they reached out individually and so they're still in a sequence, but I don't want them to get this email because it's gonna look like we don't know what we're doing. So if we have the reps add them to a list that says already requested demo, I can set a workflow that says remove them from the sequence and then they're gonna automatically get turned off so that they don't get double messages. So again, that automation here in Sales Pro, super helpful, super effective at making sure that your company looks like they know what they're doing. And then we've got reporting on that sequence here. Again, this one isn't live, but if it was, you would be able to see this. So the last piece then is gonna be your reporting and analytics. So within Sales Pro, you've got a lot of opportunities for sales um, pre-built reports here. A lot of these, if you go into create report, you'll go to the report library. And then you can also do custom reports, um, which is gonna be up here on the right hand side. So if you're interested in reporting, see what you wanna report on. Maybe you're coming from a different system and you wanna match the types of reports. You probably wanna work with an agency or a consulting team or something to help make sure that what you want to do in HubSpot is possible with what your, what your data inputs look like. But I will say, really, really expansive reporting here in Sales um, Pro. So if you go to the HubSpot website, you can see all the different features between the different levels of sales and sales professional. You get up to 25 dashboards and 30 reports per dashboard. So those dashboards can be private, they can be shared, they can be manager only. Again, those permissions and teams make that all possible. Um, and, and that's really up to you. So lots of flexibility uh, with the dashboards as well. So that's really Sales Pro in a nutshell. I think the biggest thing to keep in mind when you're looking at sales professional is the pricing and what might need to be a feature that everybody needs versus who might be a free user and need to just view that information. So because HubSpot is a contact oriented CRM and the users are free unless they have access to pro level tools, you can use HubSpot CRM for free for users that don't need full pro uh, capacity. So let's say they're not sending sequences, they don't need to see a ton of reporting, but they do need access to the contacts, that might be a free user. So again, the pro level starts with five users and then goes up from there. Pricing is gonna vary, but it's, a, it's about that 450 for those five users, depending on when you watch this video. Now, I know that was a lot, but hopefully that in-depth demo of Sales Pro has been super helpful to you. If you have any more questions, drop them below this video. And we always have more hacks coming out, so let us know what topics you wanna see. Hit that subscribe button, and we will see you next time.